What are the two most important things you need to know if you want to build something with Peltier modules? Very efficient cooling for the hot side, because the module can make a limited temperature difference between the cold and the hot sides, usually maximum 60 degrees Celsius. So you want both sides at the lowest possible temperature. And second, very good insulation. Hello guys, my name is Sorin and today I will finish building my mini fridge and I will test it. Let's start this episode with a hot radiator which is very important. I will use two AMD CPU coolers and mount them on this 5mm thick aluminum plate. Each heat sink will be mounted with four screws. I'll mark a point for each hole. The holes will be made with a 4mm drill bit. This chamfering bit will be used on all the holes to smooth out the edges. I will mark the holes on the CPU coolers, but I will use a 3.2mm drill bit now. These holes must align with those in the aluminum plate, so I need to be careful when I drill them. And now here comes the hard part. This is a hand thread tap set. I will use it to create threads inside the holes for some M4 screws. The thread tab is fixed to this adjustable wrench or handle. I insert it into the hole and turn it clockwise a few times. I can feel it grinding the material now, so I will turn it two times forward and one time backwards. The backward turn is to help the thread tab to get rid of the grinded material so it won't get jammed. Now I just make these moves until it reaches the end of the hole. If the thread tab gets jammed, you unscrew it completely, clean it and continue to thread the hole. The set has three tools. You start making the screw threads with the first one, which is kinda flat, and you work your way to the third one, this has very sharp threads. I'll skip the middle tab and jump directly to the third one because aluminum is very soft and easy to cut compared to other metals. The screw threads will be very fine after I finish with the third thread tab. Let's test the threaded holes with a M4 screw. That's pretty good. The cold radiator threaded holes were made in the same way but with a M3 thread tab. Before I screw the aluminum components together, I need to smooth out all the surfaces with very fine sandpaper and water. Then I will clean them. I've also done this with the cold radiator parts. For a good temperature transfer, I will use thermal paste between the aluminum parts. But this layer needs to be very thin and well spread. Now I just tighten the radiators with M4 screws. These holes are chamfered in such a way that the screw tip is completely sunk in the aluminum plate. After both radiators are fixed to the aluminum plate, I will leave it for a few hours and then tighten the screws a little more because the excess thermal paste will come out through the sides. The MDF and polystyrene insulation from the back panel create a 12mm gap between the cold and hot radiators, but the Peltier modules are only 4mm thick. To install them, I've made two square spacers from this aluminum plate. It has a thickness of 10 mm. I've cut them with an electric jigsaw and very important, always wear protective goggles when using power tools. I've used fine sandpaper on these aluminum blocks as well. They need very smooth surfaces for a good contact. A very thin layer of thermal paste will also be applied here. The excess paste will be pushed to the side when I tighten the screws. I've handled these aluminum blocks with my greasy hands, so after I place them in position, they need to be cleaned again. I've made two grooves on the MDF panel under each Peltier module, so the wires will not be pressed. I will stick the wires to the panel with hot glue, but in a very low place where they will not be touched by the hot radiator. The MDF and insulation from the back panel have a combined thickness of 12 mm but the Peltier modules and aluminum spacers are 14 mm thick. So, around 2 mm of the Peltier modules will stick out from the MDF. This is a 4 mm insulation gasket for Peltier modules. I will slice it in half because I need two gaskets with a thickness of 2 mm. The tiny hole between the modules is for the center screw of the cold radiator. 
so I will cover it with a piece of self-adhesive foam tape. The other four screw holes will be covered as well. And now the big radiator will be placed on top of the Peltier modules. The four screws will be tightened in the already made holes. This is where geometry and mathematics are important. If you measure, cut and drill all the parts very precisely from the beginning, they will fit together nicely in the end. You can see the 2mm gap between the radiator and the panel. This is actually very good, because I don't want the hot radiator to touch my fridge. It's very important to keep the heat away from the fridge. That's also why I've installed the 10mm aluminum spacers on the cold side of the Peltier modules. So the hot side of the modules will stick out of the fridge and transfer its heat directly to the back radiator. This video is getting too long, so this will be the end of part 2. Wait, don't close it, I'm just kidding, let's finish this project. I gave these old fans a proper clean, now I can mount them. The connectors will be cut, only the black and red wires will be used. I will connect the fans in parallel and insulate all the soldering joints with shrinking tubes. Diodes have a small forward voltage drop. I will use these 5 diodes connected in series to decrease the voltage from 12 to 10 volts for the cooling fans. This way I will prolong their lifespan. This will also help to use the fridge in a car, because the electrical system in most cars has between 13 and 14 volts, so my diodes will decrease the voltage to maximum 12 volts to protect the fans. The thermostat panel is next, everything is measured, cut and drilled, so it's easy to mount. For the rest of the connections I will use 1.5mm wires from this extension cable. There will be a lot of current flowing through them. The switch will power on the fans, thermostat and one of the Peltier modules. On the positive supply wire I will add the fuse holder before the switch, in which I will insert a 9 amps glass fuse. This fuse needs to have a lower current rating than the car cigarette lighter fuse. In most cars it's a 20 amps fuse. The negative wire is common to all the electronic components. The second Peltier module is controlled by the thermostat, so its positive wire will be connected to the relay output. I will extend the thermostat sensor wire with a few centimeters, it's not long enough for my project. On each of the four screws I will place a larger nut which will act as a spacer between the MDF panel and thermostat circuit board and another 4 nuts will fix the thermostat to the panel. This is the simplified schematic of my mini fridge. I don't like loose wires, so I will stick them on the edge of the panel with hot glue. The back of the fridge looks good so far, but after a few tests I realized that the hot radiator is not good enough to cool down the Peltier modules, so more aluminum is about to be installed. But first I want to mount the lid. This flexible seal foam tape is used to seal doors or windows. In my project it will seal the lid. I'll measure the needed pieces and cut the edges at a 45 degrees angle. They have a self-adhesive side, so it will be easy to stick them in position. I need a small handle for the lid. I've chosen this black one for a good contrast. It will be fixed to the panel with two small screws. A 13mm extruded polystyrene insulation is also added on the interior side of the lid. It's glued to the panel with a very thin layer of silicone adhesive. I will use two small hinges with screws to install the lid. The neodymium magnets are covered with a vinyl sheet now. You can't see them, but they do their job just fine. The flexible foam tape actually makes a very good seal. The reason my fridge has an upper lid and not a side door is because as the air inside the fridge gets colder, it becomes heavier and goes down to the bottom of the fridge. When you open the door, all the cold air from below will come out and it will be replaced with warm air which will enter the fridge through the top side. So the fridge will have to work all over again to cool down the air every time you open the door. But with an upper lid the cold air from below is trapped inside the fridge and only a small amount is replaced with warm air from the top side when I open the lid. Let's get back to the hot radiator. I will improve its efficiency with these 1.5mm aluminum plates. 
I will bend them in this U shape and use thermal glue to stick them together in this configuration. I will make 8 heat sinks like this. They will be glued on the back plate above and under the CPU coolers. This will significantly increase the heatsink surface, which is important because we want to lower the temperature on the hot side of the Peltier modules as much as possible. This way the cold side will also be as cold as possible. The bag radiator is finished. The MDF panels create a protection frame around the radiator, but it also has a lot of space and vent holes for a good ventilation. I will use this type of connectors for the supply voltage. I was hoping their current rating will be enough for my fridge, but after a few hours of use they warm up a bit. Nothing dangerous, but I should probably change them in the future. I've converted this PC power supply unit and use only the 12 volts 20 amps output. In the end, the fridge needs only some self-adhesive rubber pads. And finally my mini fridge is finished, after a whole week of work. It weighs 3.86 kilograms, which is okay considering the amount of aluminum used. Let's measure the current consumption. When I turn on the fridge, the Peltier modules use 6.5 amps. But the current consumption is decreasing and after a few minutes, it settles around 5.7 amps. To test the thermostat, let's say I need 16 degrees Celsius. So I will set it between 17 and 15 degrees. I know 16 degrees is not very cold. The test can also be made at a lower temperature, but it will take longer. When the temperature inside the fridge reaches the finish value of 15 degrees, the relay switches off one of the Peltier modules and you can see the current consumption dropping to 3 amps. Now only one of the Peltier modules is working and it's trying to keep the temperature stable. But if it's not able to do that and the temperature is rising to 17 degrees, the thermostat activates the second Peltier module and the temperature is starting to decrease again. Other YouTubers have chosen to connect both Peltier modules to the relay. The problem with this method is that when the thermostat disconnects both Peltier modules, the temperature inside the fridge will increase faster, so the relay will increase its workload and wear out sooner. I want to find out what is the lowest temperature the cold radiator can reach. I'll use an extra digital thermometer and fix its sensor in the middle of the cold radiator. Don't worry, no wires were harmed in this video. I will adjust the thermostat to a lower temperature, but actually it doesn't matter that much. Now we wait for a while and watch the time passing by, and this is my fat cat. After a few minutes it goes down to minus 2 degrees Celsius. That's almost as cold as my fiance's heart. And now the ultimate test. These beer cans, I mean soda cans, were deposited at room temperature, 27 degrees Celsius. What is the lowest temperature they can reach? This question will be answered by an independent adjudicator which will be represented by this digital thermometer. This will take a while, so I will make the time pass 64 times faster. After 1 hour and 40 minutes, the beverage temperature reaches 20 degrees Celsius. You can see the beverage temperature decreasing much faster than the temperature read by the thermostat. That's because the beer cans are much closer to the cold radiator than the thermostat sensor, and I also did a small mistake when installing the sensor. It's mounted in the polystyrene insulation and it can read the temperature with precision. That's why I added the small aluminum heatsink, but that doesn't help. Anyway, after a few hours the beverage temperature goes down to 12 degrees. But it's getting late, so we'll pick this up in the morning. And through the magic of video editing it's morning. The beverage temperature got down to 8 degrees Celsius, even though the thermostat is showing 14 degrees. So my mini fridge can lower the temperature by 19 degrees below ambient temperature when it's fully loaded. After this test I've got the sensor out of the insulation, removed the aluminum piece and placed the sensor on top of the polystyrene. With this modification there is a difference of only 4 degrees Celsius between the thermostat sensor and the actual beverage temperature. 
much better than 6 degrees difference from the previous test. We can also see that the beer temperature gets down to 6 degrees Celsius in a few hours if the fridge is not fully loaded. And here's some ice for you. To use the mini fridge in the car, I've made this simple extension cable with a cigarette lighter plug. You just plug it in and turn on the fridge. For this test I will only cool two water bottles. If your car has air conditioner, the fridge will be even more efficient, because it will use very cold air from the AC to cool down the back radiator. After 20 minutes, the temperature inside the fridge dropped from 28 degrees to 20 degrees Celsius. The thermostat sensor measures the temperature much more precisely now. I can't calculate the exact total cost of my fridge because there are a lot of remaining parts and I've also used some salvage components like the CPU coolers. But excluding the leftover parts, the used materials cost between 40 and 60 US dollars. So this is how I've built my homemade mini fridge. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Oh, and stop watching fake videos.